can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life, which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, can you give me that picture of um, that beast, that that. Uh, that picture of the beast that it was placed in the in front of the United Nations headquarters in New York. And then please turn with me to the book of Daniel, chapter number seven. In the first year of the Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed, and then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters, verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strode upon the great sea, <coughs> verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle wings. I beheld the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the head, and made stand upon the feet of a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Give me that picture. Put that picture first. You know why I'm saying this? Why I just want to? I'm not just. I'm not going to go into eschatology and uh, interpretation and all those. I'm not. I don't want to do that. But I just want to highlight something. And the reason why I want to do this is so that you will understand. He's just trying to find different ways to make you see and to help you to understand, to know and to understand that the end, the end, the end is here. Is the picture not there? Okay. It will help you to see that we are, you know when they are playing match, football match, and they play 90 minutes and then they have extra extra two minutes or three minutes or five minutes that is injury time all those time that we are wasted that is actually where we are that is the time that we are in right now everybody that is spiritual Everybody that is praying, every anybody that is of the spirit that is praying, you will know that the heaven, the atmosphere is tense. Except you are not praying, except you are not in it, except you are not spiritual, you will not notice. But if you do, you will know that the atmosphere is tense. <clears throat> A whole lot of things that are going on, that are going on. The Bible prophecies are being fulfilled. It's happening every day. I don't know why they cannot. Can somebody, please? I don't know what is the difficulty. This is the picture that is in the United Nations headquarters in New York. United States of America. This is the image they brought and they put it there. 
This thing was happening about a, a month or there about a go. If you are not sure, if you know somebody that is living in the United States of America, especially in New York, or even if, even if the person is not living in New York, just ask the person to help you find out whether this is true or not. This thing is in the Bible. And he's talking about the last days. But we will not hear. But we will not listen. There are so many things. You see, nobody is going to blame God at the end of the day. Not even the smallest, even that small boy that is about three years. You can't blame God. Because he's doing every single thing possible to show us what is coming ahead and so that we can get ready for it so that we will not be taking on our ways the end is here and what they are doing this thing they are doing they are not reading the bible all. You think they will go to the Bible and read the Bible. They are running their own agenda, not knowing that they are fulfilling the scriptures. Not knowing that what they are doing is actually what has been written thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. This is what the Daniel saw in the dream, in the vision that he had. And today, this year, 2021, this thing is coming to pass. They finally brought it and showed it. I will not have the time to read all the details and all of that. It has the wing of an eagle, the face look like a lion, the leg like a leopard. If you read it, that's what it's describing. It is what is going to happen at the end of the age. Twenty twenty two is pregnant. So many uncertainties, but it's not for you and I. You don't have to say amen. I'm just telling you what is is not is not something that you you are going to be fasting and praying and say, oh God, deliver us from this and all of that. God has everything God has designed. Is it none that is prophesied? Is it none that is being prophesied by Daniel? How many years ago? And he's coming to everything that has been written that will happen. And it is sealed. Not one jot will fall to the ground without being fulfilled. And they are not going to make one mistake or do, or maybe somewhere along the line they decide to change their mind. You can't. They've, everything has been programmed and sealed by God. And he's just following that pattern. So a wise man will just understand the writings of Daniel, the scriptures, the prophecies. A wise man will just understand it and then align himself and follow. You will be secured. That refers us to, to that same Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. He said, Behold, behold this beast, darkness. And they say it's for peace. Look at it, look at what is they say is for peace. And when they, the Bible says, when they say peace, peace, suddenly. There will come destruction. Can't we see? Don't we understand what is going on? I don't have time because I would have shown you one after the other. I have a dossier of it. What these people have planned? Look at the United Nations agenda for 2030. You know what they have in mind to achieve in 2030? 
This is 2021. We are about to enter 2022. Do you know what they want to achieve by 2030? One world government. One world religion. One world economy. They are intentional in what they are doing. They are purposeful. I know what some of us are thinking. You know, the problem is that we Christians, eh, the greatest obstacle, the greatest you have, they are Christians. They are born again. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. They come to church. They sit down here. They will hear you. They will analyze you, analyze everything. And when they finish, you pocket it and they continue their way as if nothing had happened. The greatest challenge we have, the Bible, that's what Jesus said, the man's greatest enemy are members of his own household. He's in the house, the church. Even while you are talking, they are criticizing and analyzing and showing everything. You know what Jesus kept saying? He said it will be like in those days, like in the days of Everybody are going about pursuing your business, pursuing your career, pursuing that contract, pursuing giving to marriage, the way you know so many um, you say all of a sudden you just hear chaos everywhere. You know what he said? He said, Let not him that is in the in the field, that's in the farm, or wherever you are, return. <laughs> Don't come back to the house to take one or two things. Hello, on that day, some of us here will return. You will come want to go back. <laughs> the money that I have, uh, the gold, uh, the jewels, uh, the shoes, uh, the clothes, uh, you know, so many things you, you know, what happened to Lord's wife. Get detached from all these things. They will ruin you. They will ruin you. If you can't deal with it now, that's why I was telling my children. I said, if you cannot deal with it, if you don't let it go now, if you don't end it, when that time comes, you will not be able to do it. And like I said, it's already late on. I say it is late. Late. You know what is late? You are you are already late to it. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because you have all the time. Don't worry. It will surely it will happen. It's happening every day. I show you. You see the man Antichrist. He has already written the agenda and giving them preachers to read, to go to the house of whatever, whatever they were. And he was reading it out. He's the one that wrote it and gave it to him to read. The stage is ready and prepared. One world economy. That's what they are rooting. They are going to become... Go, when you go home, you read carefully. Read um, Daniel 7. Go down one after the other. Go to, verse, go to chapter 8. You will see everything that is written. This thing is what they are describing there. And what is going to do. In the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, it is the same. Scriptures are being fulfilled on a daily basis. My greatest cry and burden, just like Daniel was writing, he said he, his heart was filled with, he was just heavy. You know what? You know what I keep crying out? He said, and they are Christian. They are not even baby Christian. They are the so called spirit. Spirit filled. I don't know which spirit they get filled with. Because if they are filled with the right kind of spirit, they will have understanding of what is going on. 
So in all of this, what are we supposed to do? Just find out what God is saying we should do. There is a program God is running. Satan is running his agenda. Look at it now. He's running it. Look at it. He's doing it. They are walking every day. They are having their meeting, strategizing and planning and everything. They are having one meeting or the other. They are doing everything. And you can't stop them. Anything, if you like, you can say it's internet. You can use it. You can make all the noise. When you finish, you are... What has been written has been written to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Your prayer and your fasting cannot change it. And then somebody is still telling me about the going into the government and take over the government. That the Christian should go into governor politics and take over the really. Really. Oh, be going now. We are coming. Since you were born, that is the message we have been hearing. Why haven't you the seven man? Why haven't you taken the seven man? When the Bible said that the God of this world, Satan, until his time is full, there's nothing you can do. What are we supposed to be doing? The question was asked by the person. Do we fold our hands and be looking at them? There is something that you need to do. I said, listen to me. In Matthew 5.16, my Bible tells me that you and I are the light of the world. He said, verse 15, Neither do men light a candle and put it under the bushel, but verse 14, He said, you are what? The light of uh, the light of Oak House, the light of the church, the light of heaven. Is that what he said? The light of what? The world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be what? Hid. We are the light. The church is the light that lighted the world. Light talks about righteousness. Light talks about the wisdom of God, the light of God, the glory of God. That's what the light represents. So, but look at the world. Is the world receiving that light? Hello? Is the world having that light? Is the world being illuminated? Why? Why is the world not being illuminated? Because the source of that light is deep. There is no light. We that are the light bearers are not shining. So that shows you the state of the church. If you want to know what is going on in the society today, look at the church. The church being the light of the world. So if the light, if the church is dark, how great is the darkness in the world? So there is nothing God will do to the world. There is nothing God will do to the government, to the politics of the world. Nothing. He's, if he's going to deal with them, you know where he's going to start? He's going to start with his own thing. He's just like me here now. And I'm preaching about purity and holiness and righteousness and all of that. And then my children are doing 419 and Yahoo Yahoo. It's just like me being a judge in a court. And then my own son is a criminal. And I stand to be judging people. And then they bring that my son inside the judge, the court. What moral rights? You don't have it. So what you need to do is to first of all go deal with the members of your own. That's why God, the Bible says that judgment shall start from where? from the God's own house. And that brings us to this issue. You see, some of us, you have, you know, your judgment is going to be stricter. You know, you've been hearing this and you have been adamant. 
you don't want to budge. You stick to your gun. You know what killed Ananias and Sapphira? You know what killed them? That thing they did, it, that was not the first day they did it. It's not because of that thing they did that day. They had been doing it. And they will do it and they will get away with it. They lie, they cheat, they steal, they cut corners, they swindle, they do all those things and manipulations and all of that. And they get away with it. And so they think it is business as usual. Because if they know that now a new wine is coming and you cannot carry it with this old wine. Thing. If they had known, they would have repented. They wouldn't have done that. They would have even stayed away from the church. They didn't know. They thought it was business as usual. And so the husband they came in, he sold the land, brought it. He lied. Hypocrisy. Holier than thou. He want to give impression that he is a giver. He's the one that gave. You know some of the things that people do. Somebody gives you something now. You look at that thing. Okay, I think I can give it to somebody. And then you take it and give it to somebody. And the person say, ah, how much? How can you be giving me this? And it's too much for me. And I say, no. He said, how much did you buy it? Where did you buy it? You say you bought it here. You, you, you. Meanwhile, you, it's not true. Somebody gave you. Tell the person that it is somebody that gave you, but you just feel like you are not worthy to use it. But you are giving it to them. Be honest and be sincere. Be open. Because that is how it starts. Little foxes, they destroy the plant. You see all those lies. You see all those that were lies. You see all those that were schisms and that were our. Uh, so most of these things that we do, we are so used to them and we are so comfortable with it and all of. And you are praying and all those things are there and you are still talking in tongues. Where we are going, you will not last. You won't last. The reason you are hearing this, you've been hearing it, you stick to your God. When you finish, come and carry me. It is time to lay aside weights. It is time to lay aside the sin that always besets you. So that you can run. Consecration. Once I see, once I notice it, once I see it, that is done. You know, I was discussing with my wife, I think, a few days ago. There was something that happened in the night. I was reading after him. I saw how that man ended. Man, a man that was greatly used of God, powerful, mighty. I said to myself, even in my whole generation, in my whole entire life, with everything that I think I know, and the one that I'm going to, I'm, I won't even be able to scratch what this man did. Not to talk about, but look at how he died. Where was God? Why did God allow it to happen? If your hand, if your hand is going to cause you from entering into the kingdom of God, what did he say you should do to your hand? Apply it to your body. What did he say? Cut it off. What about your hand? He said, do what? He said, it is better for you to get into the kingdom of God with one eye than to enter into hell with your whole body complete. 
Jesus is serious when he was saying this. God is coming for a church that has no spot, that has no wrinkle, that has no blemish. Spotless. That is what he's coming to take. Then the question now is, I ask myself a question. How can I be this? Sometimes we read it, we sweep it under the carpet, we pretend we didn't see it. The glory that is coming is going to rest on these verses. If you don't clean up your life, if you don't judge yourself, if you, you know why I'm saying it? Because a lot of us, a lot of men, women, young girls and young ladies and young men and all of we are so stubborn and so set in our ways. And nobody can tell you, nobody can touch you. You are untouchable. Nobody can say it to you. Because if they say it, you get angry, you get offended. You better get offended. I better offend you. And save my name. We're not talking about what is what we are doing in the on the pulpit here as pastors. Manipulating people's lives and destiny. As if to say we are the one that we are we are the we are the the owners of those lives. Something that was given to you to have. You think his life is about let me tell you, it is better. It is better you don't have anything in this life. You are trekking. You don't have nothing. But you live a godly life. Better, little, with godliness. So great gain. Is holiness, is purity. It is righteousness. There is nothing you can do about it. Luke chapter 14. <coughs> Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Matthew 28 18. And... Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and where? In earth. Go ye therefore and do what? And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Go back to 18 again. Nineteen. <coughs> Give me an IV. Verse 19. He said, therefore, go and make what? Disciples of what? All nations. Go make disciples so that you can become a disciple of Jesus Christ. So that I can become a disciple of Jesus. So that we can become disciples. Who are disciples of Jesus Christ? Who are the ones that are disciples? Do you know who is a disciple? How many of you know who is a disciple? George, you know who is a disciple? Who is a disciple, George? Yeah? Believers are disciples. Okay. Believers in Christ are disciples. Yes, another person. Yes. The followers. The followers of Jesus Christ are what? The disciples. Any other person? People, eh? 
disciples are the ones that bear fruit. Luke chapter number 14, verse 26. Let us see the who are the disciples of Jesus Christ. The ones that he said, go make disciples of all nations. And in verse 26 of, verse, of Luke chapter number 14, he says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, that is the disciple, the followers of Jesus Christ, the believers. If a believer comes and does not hate his father and mother and does not hate his wife and his children and his brothers and his sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot do what? He cannot do what? So how many of us are disciples? You hate your father. You hate your mother. George is now laughing. You hate your father, hate your mother, your brother, your sister, your wife, your cousin, everyone. When we mean hate, don't it's not this hate. It's not, it's not this type of hate. What he means is that to hate means Your father, your mother, your sister, your nobody but nobody comes in between you and Jesus Christ. That whatever Jesus Christ says you will do, anything he tells you to do, you don't need to go and take excuse from anybody. You don't need to go and take permission from anyone. Just like that young man that came to Jesus said, I want to follow you. And Jesus said, and he said to Jesus, I want to follow you, but I just lost my who? My father. My father just died. Just let me go and bury him. Then I will come back and I will follow you. What did Jesus say to him? Don't go anywhere. Let the dead bury their dead. Come and follow me and let's go. That is even the death of your father will not be a hindrance to following Christ. You see this, some of these things we do. I just do this, I just do that. Permit me, give me excuse and all of that. I will not be there. You have not started yet. You are not a disciple yet. And these are the people that God has sent us to go make disciples. That is what it means to make disciples. My wife just put to bed, so I can't come. <laughs> there is no house help, so it's only me and my wife, so I can't come. Let your wife stay there with you. Uh, what if something happened to the baby? Let something happen to the baby. What if my wife is angry? Let her be angry. You know the excuses. I said anything, just like the young man that came here today. I, I was telling him, I said men are goats. They are very stubborn. Most men, majority of the men, majority, very stubborn. He said, how can? You know, the responsibility and all of that that is upon men is uh, because they need to provide. They need to make money so that they can provide and do all those things and all that. I said, why say it? I said, when you have finished all those your arguments, hmm? bring it in the light of God's word. Because on that day, when you appear before Jesus Christ, you are going to be telling him, say, Lord, you understand that we are men. That's what you tell him. Lord, you understand we are men. When he said that, I know you have need for all this, is making money and all of that. I know that is your, he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteous. These things will be added to you. Because that word is what is going to stand before you in judgment on that day. And he said to another, another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and do what? And bury my father. 
Is it not a cogent reason? Hello? Hello? Is it not a, is it, is it a stupid reason? Is it not a very serious reason? So let's see what Jesus Christ said to him. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Come. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say what? Just to go and tell my parents and my people that I'm, you, I have a call, that you are calling me. Let me just go and tell them that you are calling me. Because I just went without them knowing. What did Jesus say? Jesus replied, no one puts his hand on the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. You are not fit. You are not fit. You see... This is what you judge yourself based on the word of stop all this your reasoning, stop all this your argument and don't, you don't, on that day will you stand and say, Lord, you know, you know the responsibility I have on my hand. This is why, because I'm so you know Caesar, what he does to you, he will rob you of your eternity. Luke chapter 14. Verse 26, 27. And anyone who does not, he said, he didn't say anyone who did not. He said, who does? Does means continuous tense. It's a continuous practice on daily basis. Anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciples. So how many of us are carrying the cross on a daily basis? You know what cross is? Cross is not a place where you go to smile. It's not a cruising, it's not a jacuzzi bed, you know, water bed where you go and be cruising and all of that. <laughs> For the cause of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I bear the mark on my body. Look at it. What is your cross? Yeah, some people say, you know, I don't want any cross. I don't want to suffer. I don't want this. I don't want this. So you don't want stress for the cause of the kingdom, for the cause of Christ. What price are you paying? What is the price you are paying? What is it that you have given up for the sake of the kingdom of God? That you will see that mark on daily basis. Not that you did today, do tomorrow and then you give up. Every single day. Because you must carry that cross to the end. Ah, but pastor, this thing is too much. Oh. But when you see the glory, when you see the glory, when you see the glory that is ahead of you, if you see the benefit, if you see where you are going, that is why the message that we are preaching today is everything under the sun. Is how to succeed, how to prosper, how to be healed, how to have your breakthrough, how to be delivered and all of that. Everything under the sun. If only in this life we have hope. We are the most miserable people that are living. You can't hear the message of eternity anymore. You can't hear the message of hope. This is not a permanent place. Look at them in the book of Hebrew. He said, this man, because they saw a city. That city is not here. That city is somewhere in above. The heavenly Jerusalem. They saw it. That is why they consider themselves to be strangers. They were living in tents. They were driving, trekking, and living under the caves and the mountains and all of that. They consider that they, the world has nothing to offer them because they saw the glory. Also, you are still holding on to your, your, you know, you know, you know all those things you we do. All those things that is, is it?
maybe you have Lamborghini. And then he just traveled to Ibadan. And you hear that Antichrist has finally showed up and then you say, My you are you start plotting the way to find your way back to Lego because of that Lamborghini. You go and recover it and find somewhere. You know you will do the unthinkable. Even if it means by twelve next midnight, you will enter the road because you are smarter than Antichrist and his men. By the time you get to Toge, <laughs> who is that? He say, "Where are you going? Where are you going?" They will ask you ten questions in under one second. You will know which one to answer. He says, show you, show me your hand. Your hand, your hand. Your face, your hand. You have not received, they will grab you. In prison. And that's where you're going to die. Why? Because you are like drugs. You are coming back for your Lamborghini. To collect it. To do what we did. You know, some people say they are building, they are building underground. They are just they are building underground and Scott stop piling food stops and all of that for three and a half years. Underground. And then Antichrist will not see you. And he will notice you. In the same way, any of you who does not give up, how many things? How many things? Everything that you have cannot be who? So how many of us are disciples? These are the things when I see it. Even to pray, I will be weak. I will know how I will know where to start. And my own responsibility is so much that it is my responsibility to make disciples. To make you disciples of Jesus Christ. So Jesus shows up now, he asks me the question. I didn't just send you to go win souls. I sent you to go win them and make them disciples. The message that you are listening, the kind of books that you are reading, the kind of things that you are hearing, the kind of places that you are going, are they going to make disciples of you or not? But these are the people that Jesus Christ is coming to take over. Hello? How many of you believe that you cannot give what you don't have? How many of you believe? Is it possible for somebody who doesn't speak French nor understand French to be a French teacher? Why? Why? Because you don't even understand, you don't even understand French. You can't even communicate it in the first place. So what are you doing as a teacher of French? The same way you cannot make someone a disciple or accept you are what? Do you know why P Peter was a disciple? You know why Peter was a disciple? In Mark chapter 10, verse 29, you see what he said. In Mark 10, 29. Mark 10, 29. In Mark 10, 29, he said, I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, no one has left home or brothers or sisters. Go to 28. 
Peter said to him, we have left what? We've left everything. That's why he's a disciple. That's why he can make disciples. That is why the making of disciples in the church is not anything. That's why we are not making it. That's why we are not at all. Because you are not give, you can't make what you are not. You cannot give what you don't have. Give me Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. You see why Paul was a disciple. Why he could disciple others. Verse 7. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider what? Loss for the sake of Christ. Verse 8. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of the knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost how many things? That is why you could be a disciple. That's why you can disciple others. If you are a late comer, if you are always absent, you will you will arrange for meeting and you will not be there. You are a leader, you call for a meeting and you are not there, and then you come late. How can you make those people a disciple? You have to make yourself first a disciple. You have to make yourself first what you want to see in other people. If you don't do that, you are, you are fake. Let's look at the life of Jesus Christ. Look at what he said in the book of Mark 11, Matthew 11, 28. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you what? In verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am what? And I am humble at heart. If you are not, you are not gentle, you are not humble, you cannot produce people like that. So you have to first of all become it. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, he said, Let this mind be in you as it was also in Christ. What kind of mind did he have? You ought to do shall be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Verse 6. Who being in the form in every nature of God did not consider equality with God to be grasped. And verse 7 says, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a serpent, being made in the human likeness. He did what? Being found in appearance as a man, he did what? Humbled himself. He was an example. John chapter 17, verse 19. For your sake. John 17, 19. For them, give me an um, King James. And for their sakes, I did what? I sanctify myself that they also might be what? Sanctified through the truth. If you don't live a sanctified life, you can't produce one. If you can't live a pure, clean life, you can't produce one. Because you can always produce after your kind. You see, it's to show us, because we are the generation, God is looking at us. He is depending on us. So that we don't just go and produce any kind of human being in the name. You know what we call disciple today? Disciple is someone, the, the one that is loyal to the pastor. He said he's a disciple. 
once you are loyal to the pastor, that's why you are preaching this one. Why, once you are committed to the church, you are distant. And that is what we have been taught and believed over the years. Give me Romans chapter 2, verse 22. Give me verse 20. Go to verse 20. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Verse 21. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man shall not steal, dost thou steal? Thou Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through the breaking of the law, or breaking the law, dishonoreth thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. See, that is why he's saying it's not going to be business as usual. You have people who have a whole lot of garbages in their lives. You can't lead the people of God. If you look at what Daniel said in the book of Daniel 11, in that 33, I think, 32, 33, he said it is those of them that understand in this last day, that have understanding. They are the ones that are going to teach. They that understand among the people shall instruct many. Not that you are teaching, you are a pastor, you are a leader in one department, or you are head of. A, when they go and get stuck, you abandon the flock and run away. Say this several times. First, where it all starts. First, this your body. This your body. Your hands. There are things you must not touch. There are kind of things you must not use to write changing figures and falsifying it and using it to collect bribe and to give bribe and using it to text unclean text and vulgar text and sending stinker and giving people a piece of your mind you from your piece of mind you're giving them pieces your mind will get into pieces there are things this your hand must not there are places this your leg must not carry you to. There are things you must not look on with this your eyes, or else you get into fire. There are things you cannot hear with your ears. There are things you cannot say with this your mouth, with this your tongue. Because you have been sacrificed. You have been sacrificed. You know what it means to sacrifice? You are no longer your own. You don't belong to yourself again. No more. But you see things that you are your own. You are not. 
You have been made a sacrifice. You are bought with a price. You are no longer your own. Glorify God in your... Give it to me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Twenty. First Corinthians six twenty. For you are bought with what a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to God, because they are God's property. Your spirit and your body. You are the temple in which God is living. You must understand it all. You are bought. You know, a price has been paid over you and you are bought. You are no longer you are. You can't be using your life and do what you want to do. You can't be saying what you want to say. You can't be running your life. It is no longer your life. You must live that life for Jesus Christ. That is why Paul said in Philippians 1 21, he said, To live is Christ. To die is gain. These are the things that we don't want to hear anymore in our pulpits. First Corinthians 7:23. You are bought with a price. Be not ye servants of who? Men. Don't serve men. Don't be men pleasers. Don't, don't live your life at the, at the command and, and, and control of men. Because you want to please them. You don't want to hurt them. And you know that this is the right thing for you to do. Because you are, in, you are into, you want to receive the approval of men. You want to be seen as a good man, as a good woman. You want to be seen in that light. You are looking for things that men approve. So a lot of people can afford to, uh, to, to obey and, and, and make people happy. And dishonor God. Because your life, everything about you is. You are looking at men. Is what is the, you are looking for the approval of men. Once they approve of you, once you are in your good in their good book, you don't care. Even, it could even be your pastor, your GO, and all. It doesn't matter what he say. What your GO say. What your pastor say. What they say is the final. It doesn't matter whether God whether God said it or not. We don't care. It is not going to be business as usual. You know these things. If you see what is going to cost you, if you don't make that adjustment, if you see what is going to cost you in the coming months and weeks and days, if you see what is going to cost you, you will have nobody to blame. Well, it's you that they will be sending prayer requests. They, they will be sending the people who say pray for me. They will be sending you prayer requests. But they won't send to me. Because when you send to me, I will answer you. I said, first of all, it starts with this body. 
some of you, you see, some of you, some of you are still sleeping now. You think you are still you are still committing fornication and adultery. Some of you here. Some of you here. You know what will happen to you? You know what will happen to you in that bed of uh, in bed of immorality and all of that? You will lay in that bed, you won't be able to come out of that bed. You can't get out of that bed. You will be stuck to that bed. In that you are naked in the whole world of God. When God will disgrace you. You think we are here to be playing jokes and all of that. Get out from that person. And they are lagging and cheating and sleeping around. Immorality. Fornication of all kinds. And you finish it and you come to church. And you lift your hand. I say lift up your holy hands and you lift them. Come on, put down, down your hand because it's not holy. It's, it's corrupt. It's evil. And then you have adulterers everywhere, including the pastors and bishops. They have divorced their wives, divorced their husband. Some of them in the second marriage, some of them third, fourth, fifth marriage. Nobody will tell you. And they, they don't see anything wrong about it. one that Jesus called, he said, this wicked and adulterous generation. Who is he calling adulterous generation? Lies. Then you come to the area of bitterness, the soul. Bitterness. Malice. Their specialties. There are people who have gotten, they, they have first class. And they are Christians and they are born again. And they are in the church and they sing and they pray. And they give gifts and they give offerings. And they give tithe and pay tithe and collect tithe. In their heart, all Hands of unforgiveness, malice. You dare not cross their path. What you did last year, I have not forgotten it. He will tell you the day and the month and the year and the time and the period and where you did it. He has record of it. Meanwhile, the Bible says love does not have record of evil done to it. How many of you love God? You will now raise your hand, even raise your leg. Where is the love of God? Women. What a man can do, women can do. They will say one, you will say three, you say ten, you give it back to him. In this day and age, it's not going to be business as usual. Clean up your life. If you are living with somebody that is not your wife, stop it. If you are living with somebody that is not your husband, get away from it. Stop it. End it. Because you will get to a point where it will be too late. Remember what happened to Esau. When the time came for his birthright, he sought it with tears. He couldn't get it. He cried. No way. He's gone forever. Where is Esau today? Hell! He has a twin brother. His name is Jacob. Born by the same woman that same day and that same hour. From the same womb. Nurtured by the same woman they grew up. One became a profane man. How did he become a profane man? How did he start? Little by little. Little by little. Little things. Set in your ways. No one can talk to you. No one can tell you anything because you are
because you are I don't know what it is that you I don't know what it is you think you are. Nobody can correct you. Nobody can tell you that what you are doing is wrong. Nobody can chastise you. I was chastised. I was corrected. I was rebuked. I was cut into pieces. Today we talk about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of, where is the God of Esau? They were twins. Where is the God of Esau? A profane man. You know what is profane? You know what it means? You know what is profanity? They take spiritual matter, the things that has to do with God, they play with it. They make light of it. They can push it aside without thinking twice about it. It won't bother them. It can say in the presence of God, it will be pressing for me. It doesn't matter to them. That's profanity, that's how it starts. You come to church, you don't have a Bible. You can't, you don't have a Bible. It's food that you bring to church. And you are not ashamed. You don't have any single fear in you. You come to the church of Jesus Christ where God is. And the word of God is going on. And the worship is going on. And the message is going on. And the service is going on. You bring out your phone. You place it in front of you. And you are typing. Ah, what kind of generation do we have? Because of phone. Before the phone came, were you not living? Who are you sending? The person you are sending, you are, you are, can he save you? When the chiefs are down, what will he do for you? Nothing. And then they are calling you on the phone. Somebody is calling you on a Sunday morning by 9 o'clock in the morning. Where are you supposed to be in the nine, by 9 o'clock in the morning? Is he not in the presence of God? So the person that is calling you, where is he? You won't be surprised the person is inside the church. The one that is calling you is inside the church. He's calling you again. This is the generation that we have. Disgracing and abusing God insulting the spirit of grace. You can't do it under my watch. You cannot. You can't do it under my watch. Two things I have always said that will happen is either you get up, you go home. You will not want to come to church again. Or you will change. If you want to go to a church where you can open your phone and do what you want to do, there are many of them you can go there, but not here. Not when I am here. Because it's not going to be business as you are. God is coming to his church. The kind of things you are going to begin to see in these coming months and few weeks and months and all of that, in these coming years. I know you'll be doubting it. Continue. You know what happened to those two beggars in Samaria? Elisha said, because they have been famine in the land for many years, I think for about seven years or thereabouts, so much that even human beings, people, parents, they will kill their children because of hunger. They will collect their children and kill the child and eat him up because there was nothing else to eat. It was that bad. So one day the prophet Elisha came and said, according to the word of God, by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance of food, so much that there won't be any, you won't know what to do with food. And one of them said, even if God, <laughs> even if God 
even God cannot make it happen most of our life. You know what the prophet said? He said, you, you will see it with your eyes. For this man, according to the word of the prophet, by that time, the following day, They were sitting at the gate. They found out that there was quiet and there was no noise happening on the other side of the camp. And all. They said, ah, ah, what is going on? Let us go. The other one said, no, you know, if you go now, they will catch you. He said, let's go. If we, if we die, we die. So they went and feed and saw that these guys have run away, left everything, their sheep, their goat, all their animals and all of that. But they came because they didn't know that God was the one that set them up. And they ran away, left everything. And they went and reported the matter. Say, come home. There is abundance here. So when they stayed in, people started trooping. They trampled on them. They died. Skeptics. That is why that your mountain of unbelief must be broken. Believe in the prophet. The prophet has spoken. God will do nothing on earth until first of all he communicates such to his servants, the prophets. And they have been speaking. So I said, where do we start this journey? Start with your body first. That is why Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present this your body, a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. And this is acceptable service unto God. This is the first acceptable service. He said, which is your reasonable service? This is your reasonable. Your body includes your tongue. The thing. Some people, they have venom in their mouth. When they open it. When they bite you, they are venom. They are, they are, they, 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 some of them are like, uh, what's the name of this name? Deadly snake. It's not Python. It's not Python. It's not dead. Black Mamba. Black Mamba. Some of us are like Black Mamba. When they open their mouth, if you see what they say, many are unthankful, ungrateful. You do something for them. Eh? They will think it is their right for you to do it. They will say as if you are owing them, you've been owing them for years. That's what the Bible says in the last days. They are going to be unthankful men and women. Children are going to be unthankful, ungrateful. Did you give me anything to keep for you? No. They can't say thank you. They will collect, if you see what they did, they will collect it and put it on the walk away. One day I called one, I said, come. Did you receive what my rep gave you? He said, yes. I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I said, okay. And he walked in. He didn't know where I was going. Did you say, thank you? He said, oh, I forgot. He said he forgot to say thank you. I said, no, it's not because you forgot, because that is what you've been doing. Women, eh, 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 women, you are, you are, you are, you are, men are donators. Then you are, you are, They see men as Donatus. And then the women are Cornelius. 
they are, they collect, they are Cornelius, they collect from Donatus. That's how they zero their life. Chapter 1, verse 1. You can't give. It must be from the men. Yeah, after all, God is a man shall provide. And then God is saying concerning you, you shall be sitting down and be eating. You have not read about the virtuous woman, the 31st woman in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 10. Proverbs 31, 10. You have not read about it, the virtuous woman. He said, Your price is far above rubies. Unthankful, ungrateful. And tomorrow you turn around and wonder why things are so difficult and so hard. And let me tell you, some of you have problems and diseases and sicknesses in your body. Some of you are carrying fibroids. Some of you are carrying all kinds of sicknesses in your body. It is not God's will for it to be. Something is wrong with your life. Something is wrong with you. Tell yourself the truth. Bitterness and anger and malice and rancor and all kinds of things are going on in your life. And you are a Christian. You can't get healed. You can't get delivered. Repent. And set yourself free. Because every time we sit down and be fasting and praying, as if to say God is dead. Give me Isaiah 59, please. As if God is dead, he can't hear. It was a young man, he came. You see, eh? I have come to, because initially in those days, he used to, I used to feel so bad. And sometimes I would go to God. And sometimes I started tending towards believing that, you know, the Bible is not really, this thing that we are reading in the Bible, it's not really the way it is. That's where at a point I was tending towards that. Because I would pray. Sometimes I will add fasting. I will pray for people. I will pray for this thing and pray for this one and pray. And after that, nothing happens. Then I was tempted to begin to think that it, that's how it is. Behold, the Lord's hand is not that he cannot do all. Neither is his heavy that he cannot but what is the reason? Give me verse 2 now, please. But your what? Have between you and who? And your what? Have done what? From who? That he will not do what? the person you are praying for, if you see the bitterness, if you see the unforgiveness, if you see the malice, if you see, and he's holding on to what was done to him or her over the years, he can't let go. Either because that your father said so, and so you believe your father, you stick with your father. Or maybe it's your mother that says so, so you believe your mother, and then you stick with your mother. It happened to me. I told you what happened to my dad. A 76-year-old man in the village died. He was an idol worshiper. He was a chief priest. He died. If you see him, he has hunchback. He has another hunch on his head like this. He, 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 this is how he walks. He doesn't bathe. He smells. When he died, they say, it's my father that killed him. That if my father wants to deny it, he should come and defend himself by drinking the water they used to wash his body. And my father wanted to prove his innocence. And he went and they washed up the dead, the, the, the body of that dirty, stinking old man. 
and gave him the water. I was there. He took it, collected it, and drank it. You know the family I'm talking about? They are directly opposite our house in the village. My dad drank it. Did he die? No. Two years later, he was still alive. Five years later, he was still alive. Ten years later, he was still alive. Fifteen years later, he was still alive. Twenty years later, he was still alive. Twenty-five years later, he was still alive. What do you think you, if it's you, if it's you and that family, you will come back, you go and greet them? Do you know my father, after all said and done, years later, he went to their compound and was greeting them. When I now come back to the village, anytime I will come back, going there is an abomination after my father's death. They say we cannot eat, we cannot drink, we cannot have anything to do with them and all of that. I say not me. I entered their compound. I greeted them. I even gave them money, the little I had. When I came back to the house, they said they saw me. Where did I go? I said I entered the compound. He said to do what? I said to go and greet them. I even gave them money. They said they Because they don't talk to them, you don't enter their house, you don't do anything, nothing. No wonder before my dad died, he gave his life to Christ for many years. I led him to Christ. He knelt down. I prayed for him. I laid hands on him. God showed him mercy. That's all that's in the matter. You think it is easy to come back? He drank somebody's body, dead body, he drank it. And then his children. Some of you, some of you is your father. Your father says your mother. You, you, you carry bitterness and a rancor and all kinds of grievances and all of that animosity towards your father, towards your mother, towards your brother, towards, and you call yourself a Christian. You are, you are already dead. You are dead, dead and gone in the grave. Why you are alive? Oh, I'm telling you the truth. Because nobody will tell you. I don't want, I want a situation, I'll get down on my, just closing my eyes and saying, in Jesus' name, my prayer is answered. All spending hours, days, and weeks fasting and praying until you develop altar. Because God cannot hear you. God cannot. So pray harder. So where we start, I think is the body. Tomorrow we will move over to the next, the next part. That's our soul, the soul of man. You must clean up your life. You must not, just like my Rev said, and they captured the picture very well. We are already, spiritually speaking, we are in that We have entered into that particular dispensation. But I think when is uh, first? Let's not see. Saturday, we are physically going to walk into it because there is the spiritual side and there is the physical side. Do not attempt to step into the new beginning, having these things in your life.
How many times will my brother sin against me and I forgive? How many times will my father sin against me and I forgive? Is there any sin that cannot be forgiven? Has anybody committed an unpardonable sin to you? So why can't you let go and free yourself of bitterness and rancor and all kinds of evil and all of And you don't know that is what is pinning you down. Your husband will say you will challenge him. And some of you, you are already engaged and you are not yet married. You are not yet married. You are just in the whatever. But you are thick-headed. If you are behaving like this, so what will now happen when you finally get married? It's going to be fire for fire. Run! I say run. Run for your life. If it's a man, run. If it's a woman, run. Because the evidence is there. It can't work. Because the moment you step in, there is nothing like going back. It is better for me to remain single and unmarried and enter heaven than to, for me to get married today two months later I am divorced and I'm looking at another man and looking at another woman. We're going to go to the communion table. If you don't, if you don't take self, if you don't examine your life, if you do not sit down and look into your life and ask some deep-rooted questions, I don't know what else to say. You see this. Give me First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-eight. Give me First Corinthians eleven twenty-eight. Twenty-seven. He said, "Wherefore." I want you to watch. I want you to listen. You see this kind of a thing. Ever since I got born again and be born again and became a pastor till today, I can count in my this finger how many times this scripture has been read in my presence. And when it is read, if you see the kind of interpretation they give to it, something that has nothing to do with it. And I don't know why. There are many scriptures like that in the Bible. When they read it, they turn, they say what it doesn't say. Give, give me NIV or NLT. It's not going to be business as usual. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord. This is the bread, which is the body of Christ. This is the cup, which is the blood. He said, whoever eats and drinks on what I will explain. On in an unworthy, unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lord. You will be guilty. And the Bible says the guilty will not go unpunished. We don't know what the body of Christ is. 
I don't just get it. I don't. Do, we think it is a religious thing. We just come for the sake of coming, and let's, because everybody is eating it, so let us eat. A man ought to do what? A man ought to do what? Examine himself before he does what? Before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks what? Judgment on himself. Okay? That is why how many? Many are what? And sick. And a number of you have. What is calling us? They are sleeping. Dead. So many, some of the dead you will see today in the house of God, in the body of God, is as a result of. The reason for sicknesses and diseases that have pers- per- prevailed and have refused to be, to be delivered and to be healed and cured and removed from your body is as a result of this. What does it mean to drink, to eat and to drink unworthy? An unworthy without discerning the Lord, without knowing that this is my brother, this is my sister. I have nothing against you. And you have nothing against me. I don't have any evil towards you. I don't bear grudges. I don't have resentment. I don't have all those whatever going on in my life. any form of bitterness, anything that is defiling in your, it must not be seen. You can't, you, you can't come here. You can't take this. And when, most of the time, when you preach this message, when you explain it, you notice that some people, they don't take it. You know, you know what it means? They are not ready. I don't want to forgive. I can't let go. Anything you want to do, let it do. Since it is, if I don't take it, I will be free. I will continue living in that my own forgiveness and all of that. That is why what will happen to you will happen to you. No prayer will save you. If you like, call my rev. If you like, Force her to fast and pray for you. If I am away, I will stop you from praying for you. Know everything you need, know everything, prayer, everything. Look into your life. Give me First John chapter, First John five eighteen. We need to see this. We need to see it. Give me First John five eighteen. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps himself, keeps him safe. And the evil one cannot do what? Harm him. COVID, Delta, Omicron. Delta, Delta Plus, oh. Anam Brau, Imo, whatever name they call them, he won't touch you. He will not touch you.
he will serve you. I will bless your bread. I will bless your work. I will keep all these diseases. None of them will come near you. Hey! Hey! But when you eat it, what when you eat it with your heart open and all of that, the blessing that is meant for you, it will come your way. Your life will be cleaned up. Everything about you will be together. Your life will be no sin. You will have faith. The grace of God will be at work in your life. Can't you get it? You still have rancor. Maybe forgive. Oh, it doesn't matter who, what, whatever they have done to you. I don't know what it is that somebody has done to you. Forgive. Have they done to you what they did to Jesus Christ? The Son of Man, not just the Son of God. The Son of as a man. You read Philippians two. As a man, you see what they did on that cross. On the cross, what did he say? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. Look at Stephen. Look at him. He was preaching. Oh, they carry stone. Boy, boy. So we hit him on the eye. Can you imagine? Boom on the eye. Boom on the head. Boom on the chest. Stoning him to die, to death. In the beat. You can you imagine the stoning? The guy was stoned to death. Think about the pain. The agony. And in the course of it, he said, Father, forgive them. <laughs> your own is that the, the gossip against you. Your own is that your father, your mother abandoned you. Your father abandoned you when you were small. Your mother did, your, your father, your uncle did, you are did. That is what your problem is. You've not started. The Bible says you have not resisted unto God. Unto God. Continue. Don't, don't forgive. Don't let go. But if you enter this new season this way, the new wine must be where? In a new bottle. The new wine must not meet the old. You know what will happen to the old? It will crack. It will burst. Father, we thank you today. We bless you for the entrance of your word. It gives light. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. You say we are clean because of the word that we hear. May the cleansing power that comes through the word of God. May the cleansing power that comes through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the cleansing power that comes through the body of Christ do his work in the life of every man and woman that partake of this table today. Help your people to we struggle under heavy weights and sin that always beset and confront us. Give us liberty, freedom from every of such weight and sins today. The power to break through, to break away from each and every one of them. May it be granted every word today in the name of Jesus Christ. May the power of the precious blood of Jesus Christ purify our conscience from every dead works today in the name of Jesus Christ. May the help that comes from above be made available to everyone, to enable
enable us to do the needful. Opening our understanding, opening our eyes to help us to see, to know, to understand, and speak to us. Bring your counsel to us. Show us what we need to do. Help us to examine ourselves, examine our lives again. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Prepare your children, prepare every one of us in the world for the coming time and season that no one will be found missing, no one will be found wanting, no one will be found out of the way. But every one of us will be under that same umbrella, being of the same mind saying the same thing, walking in the light of the truth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Bind every one of us together as one. Bring your people together. Father, I pray that everything that has been a hindrance in our lives, whatever it is, as long as there is repentance and change of mind and heart, Lord God, today, Father, may the power of the cross, the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. Let it come sweep through over everyone that is here. Clean everyone. Restore every health. Restore the strength in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us the power to live a life of purity, a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, a life of integrity, a life of power. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Mm -hmm.